So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to be here again in, at the uh, workshop at IIT Kanpu. So my talk today will be about the current situation of biomass and municipal waste to any plants in ASEAN country. And this work was done by the Waste Incineration Research Center. So first, I would like to uh, introduce about our uh, research centers. We are under the King Mongkut's University of Technology North Bangkok, in which uh, this uh, university was established since 1959. Uh, and we are the Thai leader universities of technology in the field of engineering with 10 faculties and more than 20,000 students. This research center is under the uh, uh, Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering and we focus our research on the waste treatment by thermal technology, including incineration, pyrolysis, classification, and the pollution abatement. So my talk will cover the uh, first, uh, since I will talk about uh, biomass and uh, waste to any plant in Asin, I would like to introduce waste the Asin, and then what is the uh, renewable energy used in Asin, and I forgot only the two main uh, RE in ASEAN country, which are the biomass and waste, what technology that we use, and uh, the perspective about the biomass and waste to energy in ASEAN country. So just give you the idea, uh, the ASEAN. The ASEAN country consists of 10 countries in the uh, uh, eastern part of uh, uh, Asia, country, uh, continents. Uh, if you take a look at uh, Thailand, in the middle, in the uh, north are the Myanmar, and on the uh, north uh, east, it is the Laos, and then the Vietnam, and the Cambodia. The south are uh, the Malaysia, and Singapore, and Indonesia, and far east are uh, Brunei, Jerusalem, and the Philippines. So the ASEAN community is established uh, since uh, 1967, and we have the population for all 10 countries uh, over than 600, and, uh, 600 million uh, population with, GDP over, uh, with the GDP over than uh, 7.6 trillion. In terms of the population, Indonesia at the south are the uh, biggest country with the population over than 260 million, uh, followed by uh, the, uh, the Philippines uh, over then uh, 100 million, uh, Vietnam uh, more than uh, uh, 90 uh, million, and Thailand 65, uh, Malaysia about 31. Talking about the using of the energy in uh, this ASEAN country, of course, Almost of 80% we are still using the fossil fuel, either by coal, by oil, or by natural gas. But the percentage of the renewable energy also increased every year. In the year 2013, over than 9.1% and increased every year. If we take a look at the uh, RE potential in ASEAN country, this for the biomass, and the blue one for the hydropower, the red one for the wind power, the solar, and so on. We found that almost of the potential RE in the ASEAN countries are the biomass. Of course, uh, Indonesia, the biggest countries, own the biggest potential of the biomass up to 32.6 gigawatt, and followed by Thailand also have the uh, biomass with the potential over than 2.0 five gigawatt, but very different from Indonesia and in Thailand because of the, uh, the land. And also, since uh, we are the agricultural country, so um, we are dominated RE by the biomass. So I would like to introduce some biomass that we can use as a feedstock to produce a power. Here, I show the map of the biomass to any plant or biomass power plant. Uh, Thailand are uh, the uh, uh, pioneer countries uh, that install a lot of uh, biomass to any plant up to uh, uh, 2,400 megawatt in terms of electrical power, and this counting for about 31% of the total RE in our country. 
the Malaysia, the second one, uh, the uh, potential, the, the, the amount of the uh, biomass to uh, power plant up to 836 megawatt in terms of electric power and call for about 13.3 of the total RE in Malaysia and followed by the Philippines with uh, 131 megawatt of biomass to any plant. So what biomass that we can use to produce the electrical power? So they are the rice, the maize, the oil palm, coconut, and sugar cane. The first biomass that uh, we uh, use as a feedstock to produce a power are the rice, of course, because we are the uh, agriculture country. So in terms of the uh, ranking, in Indonesia, they use the rice or the rice, the, the rice hucks as the source for the uh, biomass to any plant as number one. Vietnam, Myanmar, Cambodia, and also Laos uh, use the uh, rice hucks as the first potential of biomass to any plant. In Thailand, uh, used at the second uh, rank. Suppose that you would like to get the white rice, you need to feed the paddy into the uh, paddy uh, rice meal. Per one ton of the paddies, you can get about 700 kilogram of the white rice. And with this, you need to uh, use the ethical power for milling and drying up to 60 kilowatt hour per ton of the paddy. And you get the waste biomass in terms of the bakas, in terms of the rice hucks, up to 220 kilogram of the hucks. And these hucks can be used to produce the power up to 125 kilowatt hour in terms of electrical power. The next biomass that we uh, intend to use to produce the power in Asian country are the sugar cane. Thailand are the number one that use sugar cane to produce the electrical power, and followed by the Philippines, number two, number three are the Vietnam and the Myanmar, and Indonesia, uh, number five. So again, in order to get the sugar, of course, we need to feed the sugar cane into this mill. One ton of sugar cane can produce about uh, 121 kilogram of the sugar, in which we also need the used uh, electrical power in this plant, about 30 kilowatt hour per ton of the sugar cane, and also with 0.4 ton of the steam. And we get the biomass waste in terms of the bagasse up to uh, almost 300 kilogram. And these bagasse can produce the power in terms of electrical power up to about 100 kilowatt hour. And the third biomass are the palm oil. Of course, Malaysia are the first country that they use the palm oil waste to produce the power as the uh, uh, number one ranking and followed by the Indonesia. Again, in order to get the palm oil, we need to feed the fresh, fresh bunch of the palm fruit into the uh, palm oil milling. And this process also need uh, to use the electrical power up to 25 kilowatt hour and use steam about 0 0.73 tons. And we get the waste in terms of the wastewater, uh, the palm oil milk effluents, about 700 kilograms. And this wastewater, is, it, is, it is very dirty in terms of the BOD and COD, so we can uh, use uh, to produce the biogas, to produce the power letters, about 20 cubic meters. In terms of the solid waste, consists of first the fibers and the shells, almost 200 kilogram, with the uh, empty fresh bunch, about uh, 20, uh, 230 kilogram. These two solid waste can produce the electrical power up to 120 kilowatt hour. So that are the uh, three main uh, biomass that we uh, use to produce the electrical power. In terms of the technology that we use to produce the electrical power, well, in order to, to produce the electrical power, we need to use the steam turbine and steam generator to produce the electrical power. So we categorize into two, two categories. In order to produce the electrical power up to over than one megawatt, we use the direct combustion. Here we put the feedstock 
um, after the fuel preparation into the boiler and then direct burning with uh, uh, dif uh, different technology for the uh, combustor and to produce the hot gas. This hot gas used to, to uh, burn up the water to produce the, 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 the steam and use steam to drive the steam turbine and to drive the steam generator. For the emission control, uh, for uh, uh, direct combustion, we also uh, need to control the dust, the socks, the NOx by using different kind of the air pollution control equipment such as the electrostatic precipitator to control the dust and the back filter also to control the dust. So almost all of the emission that we control from uh, this biomass plant are the dust, the salt, and the NOx. This for the uh, bigger power plant, which has a power over than uh, one megawatt. But for the small scale power plant, so for, uh, for example, if the plant that produces the power less than one megawatt, so we use the indirect combustion or gasification of course, by use uh, this technology, we need to prepare the uh, uh, fuel to be dry and feed the dry biomass into the gasifier. Different kind of the gasifier that we use, either updraft gasifier or the downdraft gasifier of a uh, fluidized bed gasifier. And as you know that we can get the CO gas, we can get the methane and get the hydrogen with the tar, which is, which is uh, really dirty. So in order to feed this uh, combustible gas into the engine to produce the power, we need to clean up of this gas first. And in order to produce the electrical power, we need the uh, internal combustion engine uh, together with the um, uh, generator to produce the electrical power. So two, two types of technology depend on the size of, of the power plant. So just show you some uh, example of the uh, biomass uh, power plant. Uh, this shows the uh, biomass power plant uh, that use a different kind of the biomass to produce the power, about 10 megawatt. So it is the direct combustion. We have to have uh, uh, the, the area to prepare the feedstock and stock uh, the feedstock that enough to uh, run this uh, power plant. This uh, power plant will run 24 by 7 and uh, run uh, 11 months uh, per year. Uh, the feedstock we feed into the combustor and there are different kinds of the, com of the of combustor, either by stoker or thermal grade or free dice bed. And then uh, combustion will be taking place here. Hot fuel gas will pass to the boiler, so we uh, burn uh, we uh, heat up the water to uh, produce the steam. Steam uh, used to drive the uh, uh, steam generator and used to drive the uh, uh, generator to produce the electrical, electrical power. For the fluid gas treatment, we use the electrostatic precipitator, or most that we use to control the dust. And uh, socks uh, for SO2 actually uh, in the biomass. Uh, there are very few percentage of the sulfur controlled with the coal. So actually, uh, we can uh, control, by uh, control the uh, type of the biomass, we can control the SO2. Uh, for the NOx, also the, uh, the, combust the combustion temperature inside the furnace, not so high. So also we can control uh, the NOx emission. Uh, these are some example of uh, demonstration plant. Uh, this plant can produce the uh, power up to 2.5 megawatts of uh, electric power. So we need to feed the rice hack about uh, 100 ton per day to produce 2.5 megawatts of uh, electric power and burn it into the boiler and then drive uh, to the uh, 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 steam turbine. So we, uh, the, uh, for this plant, they use the combustor as the reciprocating incline grade type. And this uh, plant need to produce the steam about 17 ton per hour with a pressure about 35 bar, temperature uh, 420 Celsius. This shows the picture of this plant. So this uh, overall of the plant. And this is the steam turbine and steam generator. This is the rice hucks uh, for the stock piling. And these are the ash that coming out uh, after the combustion. After combustion, you get the uh, rice hucks, and you know that in the rice hucks, there are a lot of, a lot of silica. So uh, we sell uh, this uh, silica from 
uh, the right hacks uh, to be used, extract silica from the, uh, uh, the edge uh, to produce the uh, solar panel. Another example is the Bagasse power plant. For the Bagasse power plant, this plant can produce the uh, electrical power up to 41 megawatt. And for 41 megawatt, we need to feed the uh, Bagasse uh, more than 2,000 tons per day. This is for 41 megawatt. And we use the different, uh, the uh, uh, boiler produces steam up to uh, 70 bar. And this is a kind of the cogen power plant in which uh, one by uh, one combustion, we uh, get the steam and use steam to produce the electric power and some of the steam that used to feed into the process of the plant. So we call the cogeneration power plant. This is the picture of uh, these uh, 20, uh, 41 megawatt power plant. So it's a, it is a big power plant and use a, 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 a very uh, sophisticated uh, uh, equipment, machine and equipment. That for the big power plant, but for the small scale power plant, for example, the power plant from biomass that produce the power less than one megawatt. So as I told you, we introduced the uh, technology of the gasification. We uh, launched the uh, demonstration project uh, to try to uh, testing that we can uh, produce the small scale power plant by using the gasifier. We launched a tubal biomass uh, gasifier power plant in our country by uh, using different kind of the biomass such, such, such as the bagasse, the rice straw, the cassava rhizome, the palm oil shell, the rubber wood residue, and the concord. Also some of the fast growing plants uh, such as the eucalyptus or the coconut shell and fiber. Uh, this shows the summaries of uh, the uh, demonstration plant. So it consists of, of course, from the biomass, we need to uh, transport the biomass from the field and then we need to uh, uh, prepare this biomass to be used as a feedstock for the gasifier. Uh, for the uh, biomass preparation, we need to dry this uh, biomass uh, to have the moisture content not over than 15 percent and size not over than 10 centimeters in order to fit into uh, these uh, reactors. And in this 12 uh, demo project, we use different kind of the uh, gasifier technology, either by the dial dive gasifier or up dive gasifier. Some uh, project, we uh, introduce uh, technology from European. Uh, for example, some technology, they use a four-stage gasifier with separate reaction zone. Uh, for example, this one, uh, they have uh, four uh, reaction zone. First, the drying zone, and then the pyrolysis zone, and then oxidation zone, and then reduction zone. So they separate uh, these uh, four units uh, separately. And this is the conventional one, the dive dive gasifier, in which the gas uh, flowing up uh, down, uh, at, at, at the bottom. And for the gas cleaning, we use a cyclone, we use the cooling water, we use the waste scrubber, and the back filters. In order to produce the power, we can produce either uh, electrical power or the uh, up steam. Uh, in terms of the electrical power, we use the gas engine that can produce the electrical power up to uh, 350 uh, kilowatt. Some application, we uh, produce the scene gas and use the scene gas to substitute the LPG in order to uh, reduce the LPG use. For example, in some demo project in the ceramic industry, uh, actually they burn the LPG too much and the LPG cost uh, increase uh, very, very much. So uh, we replace some part of the LPG by replacing with the synthetic gas. These are the uh, summaries of the uh, demo project for the small scale gasifier. So also for the biomass, for heat and power target, we also set up the target uh, to produce a power and uh, the, the heat. For example, in Brunei, Jerusalem, they are not have the biomass target yet. In Thailand, we target to produce the power from the biomass in terms of the electrical power up to 2,600 megawatt. 
And for the waste also, we also have the target to, produce, to establish or install uh, the waste to any plant up to uh, 160 megawatt in the year 2020. In uh, Vietnam, uh, 400 megawatt for biomass in the year 2030. It allows 58 megawatt of the biomass and 36 megawatt of waste in the year 2025. In Mauritius, 1,340 megawatt for biomass and almost uh, 400 megawatt for waste in the year 2020s. The Philippines, uh, 277 megawatt of the biomass in uh, 2030. The Myanmar, about 18% of the RE that tried to be uh, set up as a target in Myanmar in the year 2020s. Indonesia, 810 megawatt of the biomass power plant in the year 2025. In Cambodia, 87 kilowatt of the biomass by using calcified technology. And in Singapore, no biomass target yet because since uh, they are very small country, so they don't have any biomass. So I move to the second topic about the waste to any plant. Here show the potential of the uh, waste to any plant that install already. The, of course, uh, the, uh, the, uh, big, the, the, the first country that use the power from waste are uh, Singapore because they don't have any land for landfilling. So all of the waste that generated in this country, they burn it. So uh, they install the waste to any power plant up to 260 megawatt. And it's counting for up almost 90% of the total RE of Singapore. In Thailand, we uh, plan to uh, build the waste to independent up to 65.7 uh, 65, 65 megawatt, and which is still very small percentage of the total RE, above only 1%. And Indonesia, 36, 36 megawatt. I show you some. Uh, composition of the waste that generated in Thailand, but believe me that the uh, waste composition in Thailand are about the same as other country in ASEAN because we have the same behavior. We mix everything into the garbage bin. So this shows some uh, waste composition in some cities, uh, Chiang Mai in the north, Nakhon Sima at the middle, uh, Phuket in the south, uh, Bangkok center, and Chamburi on uh, the eastern side. You can see the blue one is which uh, show, the, show the percentage of the organic waste. Organic waste coming from the food waste and also from the, um, uh, from the uh, 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 trees, something like that. So since we mix everything into the garbage bin, we don't uh, separate the uh, food waste or organic waste before, like in, uh, Singapore, like in Singapore, like in uh, uh, Japan or Korea. So, a lot of percentage, big percentage of this organic waste. And followed by the, uh, uh, the, the gray one for the plastic, about 20%. So if compared with another uh, country, as I told you, that same as in China, but different in Seoul, in Singapore, and in Tokyo, because they already separate this organic fraction out already. Which this difference the uh, waste composition in ASEAN country leads to very high moisture content, sometimes over than 60%, and these lead to very low heating value. I skip some slide. But the business model for waste to energy in Asian country now uh, different from another, another country. We try to introduce the private company to invest into the plant. And then this uh, private company will get the income from two sources. First, by the tipping fee. And second, by the selling of the electricity. And the government accept all of the electrical power that produced from the waste to any plant. As I showed you, that, uh, as I showed you uh, previously, that we have the plan uh, to produce the power from waste up to 160 megawatt. And we also give them some premium uh, by, uh, by uh, buying the uh, electricity from the waste to any plant, which counting for about 16 
US cent uh, per unit, which is very good for the uh, investor to uh, invest into the waste to any plant. Some uh, demonstration project in Phuket, for example, this one is the uh, waste uh, to any plant has a capacity to produce the power up to 700 ton per day and can produce the electrical power up to 14 megawatt by using the uh, direct combustion stochastic technology with the steam turbine generator with the uh, semi-dry reactor and the back filter. And it is the uh, private-public partnership in which we invite the private company to invest into this uh, plant and give them the concession for uh, 15 years and can be the contract for another 15 years. After that, need to transfer uh, the plan to the government, so we call the build, operate, transfer, or BOT concept. And this show the overview of the plan. It is a direct combustion uh, by using the incineration, and then the gas treatment by uh, using the semi-direct reactors, uh, the back, the back half heater to uh, control the emission. So in conclusion, we found that the biomass and waste play the major role of the RE in Asian country. Rice hulks, bagas, palm waste are the potential biomass used for power production. And for biomass power plant use, we categorize into uh, two technology. If you would like to produce the power over than one megawatt, direct combustion plus steam, steam boiler and steam turbine are the uh, preferable technology. For under one megawatt, by, uh, we use uh, gasif gasification plus the engine generator. Uh, for the waste characteristics, it is a mixed waste, same as uh, in uh, another uh, Asian country, which gives you the very wet waste and gives you very low heating value. Technology, we use the direct combustion incineration and together with the steam boiler and steam turbine. And Thailand tried to launch the program for small scale biomass and waste our plan by introducing gasified technology. And for the business model, we introduced the public private partnership business model for waste to any plant uh, in order to uh, uh, convince the private company who uh, interest in this technology invest in the plant first and then uh, transfer the plant back uh, to uh, the government. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kurtzman. That's a very interesting talk. Uh, now we are open for questions and comments. Uh, please uh, indicate your name uh, before asking the questions, so this way. Good morning, sir. I am Pooja Ponita from Center for Advanced Studies. I want to ask if that biomass plant is still struggling with SOX and NOX emission. Uh, for the biomass, actually the percentage of the sulfur inside the biomass is really low. Yeah. Control with the coal. Is higher. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we don't have any technology to control the socks because very low sulfur. Only uh, uh, by the combustion, it is enough uh, to control the socks to be uh, below the uh, regulation. And for the NOx also, with the direct combustion, uh, by controlling the amount of the air and amount of the biomass and control the temperature inside the composter, control the uh, reaction time, we can reduce the amount of the NOx to be lower than the standard by uh, don't need any, any uh, energy control. So aluminum also contain a greater part, means like if we uh, segregate this from organic part, if we come to the uh, mean, inorganic part, you mean, yeah. then uh, uh, people had tried gallium and aluminum oxide for selective catalytic re reduction. Uh, I mean, this is the amalgam of gallium and aluminum. So have you tried anything like that? Means uh, I'm curious about that bag house that you have used in your uh, plant. You mean for the waste? Yeah, for basically uh, for mm -hmm. selective catalytic reduction of NOx using these uh, uh, gallium and aluminium uh, mm. Uh, mm. that is amalgam. Yeah. Uh, for, you mean for the NOx reduction? Yeah. SDR? Yeah. You mean uh, SCR? Uh, I mean SCR, yeah. SCR, selective, selective catalytic reduction, reduction re re reactors, using, yes. Uh, gallium and aluminium oxide. Actually, uh, for the waste to any plant in ASEAN country, the uh, NOx emission standard is still high about uh, 180 ppm. So by using SNCR, selective catalyst, 
uh, by injecting the urea inside the combustor okay. can reduce the NOx. Okay. So we don't implement SDR yet. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, please. Um, go ahead. So good morning, sir. My name is Rishish Mishra. Sir, my question is that uh, if still we are going for the biomass and all, sir, there's a lot more, the leftover that, that has yes. been of course by the right. gas. So how, how the country is dealing with that? Uh, you mean uh, the, uh, the, the uh, biomass left in no, the field, right? No, no, no. no the, after the gasification process or any process, uh, the, still that uh, some waste is still there uh, that has not been completely burned. All uh, right, yeah. right. In the uh, gasifier, the solid waste we turn into the, the, the char. Yeah. And actually, we can use this char uh, if you have the very good biomass, for example, the, uh, uh, the uh, wood, wood tree, for example, uh, the char can be uh, used to be the source uh, to produce the activated carbon later. Thank you, sir. Biochar, I think. There's one more here. Dr. Shayok Banerjee from IIT Hyderabad. Uh, what's the effective efficiency, thermal efficiency of these biogas power plants? Uh, they would depend on the quality of biomass, but right, uh, for right. your case, like for say rice husk, sugar cane, what mm. is the effective efficiency after you do the drying? You mean plant efficiency? Plant efficiency. Well, uh, plant efficiency, uh, we're talking about the uh, input is the uh, energy from the waste, mm -hmm. and the output is the electrical power. Yes. If only this, uh, uh, plant efficiency is, is this about 20%. Okay. But okay. Uh, we can increase efficiency by using the coal generation, mm -hmm. by produce steam, for example. Yes. By yes. coal gen, we can increase the efficiency of the plant up to 60 or 70%. And how would you in incentivize the farmers to sell the waste uh, instead of burning it? So it's a huge problem in India that uh, the uh, cost of collecting the uh, agricultural uh, waste uh, uh, from the fields and mm. then selling it is not financially feasible mm -hmm. for the farmer, mm -hmm. so they just burn it. Right. So, is there any strategies? So, yes. because you guys are also mm. producing rice a lot. Right, right, so, right, yeah. right. Not not only that, but also the problem of the protest from the people. The, the people don't like to have the power plant in front of their home. Mm. So, uh, in Thailand, we introduced the idea of the community power plant, in which this plant invests by the private private company, plus the government, and plus the farmers. So the farmer is uh, uh, take a share on that plant and then they collecting the uh, biomass from the field and then send into the uh, into the plant and they own that plant so they don't purchase the plant so they have they are willing to collecting the, 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 the biomass from the field and send to the plants and they put they, 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 they then purchase this plant because they own that plant. So we call the community power plant. Any further question? Comments? Yes, please go ahead. Sir, as you mentioned, the plant efficiency is about 20% mm. and mm. it can be further increased. So are you sure that it is 20%, like you are at 20% uh, means like that much efficient plant because as per the values of the caloric value of bagasse and the uh, palm oil waste mm. and all this, I, the 20% is very high if you are means talking about the... 20% uh, uh, for, for the direct, com direct combustion Okay. It's okay, but for the gasifier, about 10 to 12%. Yeah, it's less than, less than, less than that. <laughs> Gasification will be much lower. It's 20%, 22 is for the combustion. Okay, so let's give a appreciation to our Thank people. You. Thank you.